Hey guys, this is JP, and here with my final tutorial, the Rupture Farms camera drone. It's not the same as the other camera drone, these never had a name. This is just... I think the closest to a name they had was Robot Monitor. Whatever you want to call these things, this is what we're making today. I'll turn the textures on and you can see it's red and green. And blue. I know it's a bit hard to see. That's blue. Um, so we won't worry about animations, but you can see that the claws can, the whatever you want to call these, can open out. Ooh. Anyway, so enough fiddling around. These things are quite interesting because they only appear in rupture farms nowhere else or well, technically appear in stockyard return but that is still rupture farms territory they were supposed to appear in boneworks if you look at if you've still got the box which i actually have right next to me in abe's exodus that's me getting the box there is a there is a very odd pair of screenshots they have on the back of the box where it shows the area with the uh, with the minecart, if you've played Exodus, you'll know the bit. There's a bit where the minecart, where you go up and around this slig area, and you blow up a bunch of mines, kill the sligs, and destroy an, a security orb, and then you go up and squash some more sligs and leave the area. In this, you get this first screenshot is as it's played, but the second screenshot has this drone in it. There was a, and. Apparently these were supposed to be in Necro Mines, um, Brewery, and Fico Depot. And of course Boneworks. So these were considered, but they were just a bit too full, of, a bit too much for the time. Back in 98, this, these were too memory taxing, so they had to get rid of them. Which I find is a bit of a shame, because you, know, you can tell where they wanted them. There was a orb, for example, in just before that, been in Boneworks where it had motion beams, much like the ones in Stockyard um, Return did. So, without further ado, let us begin our, our final tutorial, which will hopefully <laughs> stay the last tutorial, because I don't think many people will really get much out of this, but I'd like to think that we can, we can try. So we start off with our cylinder. Let's do the head first. Because that's, but I think everybody remembers. We have our, we we'll add our subdivision modifier. We want our thickness to be the thickness of this top bit. Sometimes it will, the scale control will be a bit fiddly, so have to be a bit patient with Blender. We we'll get our thickness correct with some loop cuts. That is just Control R, right click, shade smooth as well. So Control R will give you the loop cuts, and then right click will give you the smooth. The top is slightly wider than the base, so we just scale it out slightly. Let's, let's scale this appropriately. I think that's something we should do is scale first. I should have done that first, I'm sorry. We should scale first, then do, this, then do the match up. Sometimes I wonder how I managed to make these models in the first place. So now it's still right now. Now we just need to get the basic head sorted. So we just do this. We add a loop cut and then screw it out. And you'll have your dome. If you feel it's too, if you feel it's too wide, just pull it back in a little. And you've got your dome. Then we extrude down, and we're in and down. I'm really hoping that becomes the thumbnail. So now we have our head. Uh, that, um, that which is just you know turns left and right. If you've not seen these before, these these things just look left and right. 
Let's make sure that it's down enough. Let's see how I didn't I made it too thin, so I just need to thicken it a little bit. Once again, just scale up. Okay. The devices on it, the little the light and the camera are just cylinders. Now we have one modifier. We can just copy it to the other to the, to the new one. We'll do the main camera first because it's you know, the easier one. It also gives you a basis for the other. You want the front to be looking down, so you grab the front and then you rotate it down on the y-axis. Scale it up a little bit. You want, you want it to match pretty much the entire face. Then you extrude in, then you extrude out, and there's your camera. If you want it to have more of a domed look, you can just do this. And there's your camera. As for the other little light, it's the same deal. Just add your cylinder. Now unfortunately I've lost my floating mine um, model, so I can't uh, so I can't really give a tutorial on that. Um, for, like for box modeling and everything. If you guys really want me to do the uh, floating mine, then drop a comment, and I'll see if if you guys if enough of you guys want it. There's also a landmine that I could do as well, but I don't have I I obviously have the renders. I just don't have the. Thing. So obviously I could find a way to box model them because I could use the traditional method, but it's up to you. If you if you want to see those, because I feel like the amount of tutorials I have already might be already enough. Okay, so our our drone's head is done. Parent them to this with Control P. Then we do our body. Another cylinder. And sometimes this can get a little bit touchy. Okay, now we've got that. Let's put this in. You know, the original Abe's Odyssey game didn't quite get the drones the placement right when it came to this is inside this is outside because these were originally meant to be on the inside of rupture farms and the orbs were meant to be on the outside ones on the outside could be you could argue okay well they're motion scanners the one on the inside uh, so there's one, um, an orb inside Rupture Farms, in one of the secrets, for no reason. It was just there. I mean, obviously it was there for, to stop Abe chanting, but it wasn't there to... Like, why didn't they just use one of these? In my VFX edit, I actually put one in, but it made no sense. And... Credit to the um, modder Polar Gates. Polar Gates, who you know, did the Odyssey Continues, One Drifter's Dream, Odyssey Remastered, his mods fixed this issue. And he, I, when I talked to him about this, because yes, I talk about useless bits of games, he said, you know, it was something he, wa he wanted to get right. He wanted to make sure that the drones were in the right place and the orbs were in the right place because otherwise they felt you know both of them do the same thing literally both of the thing and both these things do the same thing especially since exodus came out and it proved that both machines can literally do the same thing 
So what I should have done there, rather than just oh, let's just pull that down. Okay. So the arms. The arms are, I believe, cylinders. Yes. So we just need another cylinder. Copy across our modifier. I'll make them a plus shape instead of an X shape, but I will move them around. It just makes it easier to duplicate. Sorry, it's A not S. Okay. So let's take, let's just move this. Use some loop cuts to get them looking right. I believe I made this in. Yes, I made this in 2022, so it's been a while. So forgive me if I'm a little rusty on how I originally made this. Also, it might be better if I hit that triangle on here. So this, I should just check, because this actually just misses the, the lip of this. So I put that back. And these are loop cuts to give it its shape. And we now have one of our arms. This will scale as well. The next arm is a little more difficult. So what we do is we have another cylinder. It's basically all cylinders at this point. We will then put that on its side. You can see I'm just extruding in. I've already got half the shapes. I've just, you know, done a couple of sizing, a bit of size, a bit of... And we've, we've turned it outside, we've scaled it accordingly, and then we're just using loop cuts to give, and extrusions to give impressions in it, and to make those impressions stand out. And to get the arm to look right, all you need to do here is extrude one of the faces. So we want this to be going in, so extrude this one. Do some loop cuts, and you've pretty much got this. Use some more loop cuts to give it a better shape. And then you duplicate that to give yourself another wedge. Again, if you feel like that's too wide, you can always just scale it in a little bit. Like so. And then we just need to add the spade. These here I remember being a little more difficult, but let's see how I go this time. So we'll add a cube instead of a cylinder this time. We'll then still give it its subdivision. So we'll extrude out, so we'll scale out like this, make it look like an oval. And then we'll add three loop cuts. And then we'll make it a U shape. You can use proportional editor, this little dot down here. Here we go. Okay, so now we've got our U shape. We then extrude out. And then, without proportional editing, we scale in. And then we add some more loop cuts so that it can then be scaled in appropriately. Just need to fiddle with it to make you make sure you get that spade shape. Something else these have is a U shape through it, so you need to pull 
these forward. You may end up having to pull some of the other ones back. But now we've made this too spiky. That's probably me pulling everything. So, also I need to turn the cage back on. So, and that's fine. I knew that was going to happen because I because that's part of this method. In my opinion. But of course, it does end up taking more time. It depends on how you want to do it. It's just how I do it because I'm because I just like to do things this way. So it's got a sort of. It's also it's a lot thicker than this, so we pull that in, down. And this needs to be pulled back. The issue here is that the loop cuts have all conglomerated together and have made this a lot spikier than it should be. But now it looks all now it looks a lot better. View is not working. Okay, that's that's why. Okay, so I just need. I, if you find that you keep phasing through things, turn your clip start down, but not too far down. Otherwise, things will stop corrupting. It's weird. Just mess around with it for a bit, and finally, to make this look like a proper thick piece of metal, add some loop cuts down here, and you've basically got your shape. Sometimes it won't quite match the thickness, so you just need to pull them down. And you'll have your thickness. And there's your spade. You then attach that to the arm. And for the last bit, make sure it's on median point, make sure it's on global, and then you just flip them around which axis is this? X. To make this look a little like it, make sure it doesn't clip, you just pull them slightly so that they look like they're resting on each other. Duplicate and then rotate 90. And again, make sure these don't clip into each other. And then, finally, we just select them all again. Obviously it would help if we did parent all of these to each other, that I'll do that in a minute. Because it would make it a lot easier for them to function. I don't know why that's selected. And... Missed one. And then, I missed another. That's something we should do at the start, actually, is to parent them before, with Control-P, before anything happens. Otherwise they they get lost, or you know, you know, you'll move something and something else won't move. You basically create chains. You can obviously do parent modifiers as well, or constraints rather, parent constraint, but it... Uh, which is a lot more, which is a lot easier to manage, but it can be a little harder to set up. 
and parent the head to the body and now it moves with it. And finally we'll add our textures which we which I already have pre-made for me here. Obviously you won't have those, you'll have to go onto Google Images or textures.com and get something yourself. Um, make sure I save this otherwise it might crash. Blender is a weird thing about crashing going to, to other modes. Anyway guys, thanks for tuning into all of these. Um, I'm sure they were not very helpful because I just sort of came up with this idea on a whim and someone said I should post it to YouTube. Um, obviously the first one, that, the first one in this playlist, that, that being this itself, obviously I decided to make a series out of because I thought at least that person would enjoy it and they have. But I know that uh, the rest of you might find that he's really, really boring, and I would not blame you if you did. Because not only is my voice inherently monotone, my editing, or 3D, whilst effective, it um, <laughs> isn't professional in the slightest. But there we have it. There's our camera drone. That's the series concluded. Thanks for thanks for watching these, and I'll see you in the next whatever it is. Hopefully I'll get back to the visual effects edits soon.